Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. If we can stand all over the building, amen, we're going to open up, amen, this portion of service with a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy, God, towards us. God, we thank you, God, right now in the name of Jesus, God, for the confidence that we have in you. God, that we pray anything in accordance to your will, God, that you hear us. God, we thank you, God, right now in the name of Jesus that we are a heard people on this morning. God, we serve a risen and a living Savior on today. God, we thank you, God, right now in the name of Jesus. God, your will on today is what we want, God. God, your will on today is what we're seeking for. God, right now in the name of Jesus, God, we pray, God, right now, God, for your presence, God, to abide with us. God, right now in the name of Jesus, God, we're praying, God, right now, God, for your presence, God, to reign on us, God. God, on today, God, we thank you, God. God, for this is another day that we have never seen before. God, you have graced us with life, health, and strength, God, and the activities of our limbs. Uh, and God, for that, we come into your house to worship and to bless you and to praise you. God, we thank you on today. Uh, God, it's from you, from you, God, whom all blessings flow. Uh, and God, we come to worship you and thank you on today. Uh, God, we come to magnify you. Uh, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you uh, and we bless you and we praise you, uh, God, for what you're going to do on today. Uh, God, we thank you, God, when we understand if it had not been for you on our side, uh, we don't know where we would be, God, but we thank you, God, God, for sending fresh winds, uh, God, oasis in the desert, God, to revive us, God. God, you brought us up out of, up out of mock and a mire pit, God, God, out of a horrible pit, uh, God, right now in the name of Jesus, so we come to say thank you uh, for everything you've done for us on today, God. God, we want to say thank you, God. God, for keeping us in our right mind. Uh, for keeping us healthy in our bodies. Uh, God, for when the enemy came in like a flood, uh, it was you that lifted up a standard against him. Uh, God, we thank you uh, and we worship you uh, and we love on you today, God. God, we open up our mouths and we shabak you. Uh, God, we say something wonderful towards you. Uh, God, for it was you that did it. Uh, God, it was you that was merciful. Uh, it was you that was grateful, God, and we love you on today. We are thankful on today, and we bless your holy name, for the Lord is good, for the Lord is merciful, for the Lord is kind, and we thank you on today. God, we thank you for brand new mercies. God, we see on today. God, we thank you for brand new mercies that we feel on today. God, we thank you for brand new mercies uh, that we have received on today. Uh, God, right now in the name of Jesus, uh, let the power of the preach word, uh, God, descend upon us. Uh, God, right now in the name of Jesus, uh, God, I thank you on today uh, for the life-changing word uh, that is coming towards us today. Uh, God, right now in the name of Jesus, uh, our prayer is today, uh, we don't want to leave the same way that we came. Uh, God, right now in the name of Jesus, us, uh, change us. Uh, take us from here to there. Uh, rearrange us. Uh, shift our mindset. Uh, God, shift our hearts. Uh, God, we want to love like you. Uh, we want to be like you. We want to walk like you. Uh, God, Father God, in the name of Jesus, uh, we decree and declare, God, God, a shift in the atmosphere. Uh, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, uh, a shift in our praise, uh, a shift in our life, uh, a shift in the way we walk, a shift in the way we talk. Uh, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, uh, we decree and declare it on today. Uh, God, right now in the name of Jesus, uh, and we put our hands together. Uh, we open up our mouth, uh, and we bless you. We bless you for it. We thank you for it. Uh, we magnify you for it. Uh, and for this, we give you praise. Uh, I said, and for this, we give you praise. God, we love you. We thank you. This for the prayers of your people.
rejoice, help me rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord
nobody, nobody, not the doctor, nobody, not a lawyer, nobody, not my husband, nobody, nobody, nobody that can save, nobody that delivers, nobody that can heal, nobody, 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 nobody. Friendship looks like 
for loving us better, hallelujah, that we loved ourselves for treating us better, oh hallelujah. Good friends, hallelujah, they treat you well when it's good and when it's bad. Good friends tell you when you're right and when you're wrong. And even when you got a good fallout, a good friend don't turn their back on you. Even when y'all have disagreements or tribulation in the friendship, a good friend, hallelujah, remains. They remain faithful, hallelujah. I'm grateful to have a friend like Jesus. Hallelujah. And even if you take away from the personal characteristics, hallelujah, his deity in and of itself, I can't imagine why you would not serve a God like ours. He's all, even when you think about what he's done as a friend, he has an ability greater than that, hallelujah, to heal, save, set free, and deliver, hallelujah. I just get excited when I think about the goodness of Jesus. The times that he was good to us and didn't have to be. The times that he's continued to make ways even in the midst of what we got going on. Even when we don't serve him to our best. Even when we don't do what he told us to do. He's still, hallelujah, a faithful friend. Somebody ought to bless the Lord, hallelujah, for the faithful friend you have in Jesus. He said all your sins and griefs he'll bear. I don't know if y'all do this or not, but it's a privilege to be able to carry everything. Not some of it, not parts of it, but everything to God in prayer. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. You can have your seat in the presence of the Lord. But I'm grateful for the friend I have in Jesus. Oh, I'm blessed his holy name. There are some times where you leaned on friends that you thought would do it. Hallelujah. You reached out to some people that you thought would come through. Hallelujah. But there's a Savior that we have that has given us a favor in his eyesight to be just that kind of friend to us. And for that, I'm grateful. Oh, bless his name. Come on and clap your hands. Celebrate yourselves this morning. Hallelujah for joining us at Power. Hallelujah. Help me celebrate our leader. Bishop Carlos Dwayne Cannon Sr., who had a birthday on this past week. Bless you, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we magnify him. I'm standing, Brother Jeremiah. Happy belated birthday. Brother Jeremiah celebrated birthday Thursday. It was Thursday. Amen. And we bless the Lord. Hallelujah. For being good to us. We bless the Lord for giving us another opportunity to assemble in his house of worship to give him glory, honor, and praise, and to hear of his word. Anybody excited about another opportunity, hallelujah, to be in the house of, when I grew up, they called it the household of faith. Hallelujah. But I'm grateful on today. Amen. We're going to be, uh, move forward in our worship on this morning. I ask that you, and by words of, <coughs> excuse me, announcement, continue to keep Sister Miranda in your prayers. Um, in the passing of Brother Tony. <coughs> Continue to keep one another in prayer when you don't see those around us. We know Sister Jonica had a baby. Um, continue to keep, excuse me, her and Sister Imani in prayer. Amen. And keep one another in prayer. I know we live in a day and time. When I grew up, we had prayer lists. And so when they gave the announcement, they was like, well, pray for Sister Shirley, you know. Sometimes they told people business and they did not intentionally. They did it from a sincere place. Sister Shirley Gout flared up, prayed for Brother Jenkins, you know, his son back in prison, you know, those types of things. But, but it came from a sincere place. So and we're in a space now where, you know, everybody don't want to tell everybody what's going on with them. Some of them don't even tell the pastor. Amen. And then we get mad when the pastor don't show up. But he ain't know. But when you don't see somebody around you, if you have relationship, ain't nothing wrong with reaching out. But if you don't, talk to him who can help the situation. Talk to him who can see about them, even if it's not a situation. Maybe they traveling, you know, maybe they had to work, you never know. But you never know how you could be the one thing that makes somebody smile. You could be the, your voice or your, your encouraging word can be the one thing that makes a difference in somebody's day. So I encourage you, when you don't see somebody near you, around you, you want to make sure, say a prayer. Even if you don't reach out, say a prayer. A little prayer goes a long way. Amen, somebody? Amen. We bless you and we thank you. Hallelujah. So we're preparing to take our offering at this time. Amen. Offering time. I grew up and it says happy time.
but every time I'm in worship, it's happy time. Because I just love, love, love being in the presence of the Lord. It's in the presence of his Lord that fullness of me is made whole. Hallelujah in his presence that we find what we need. Amen. And we designate this part of the service, amen, to be a financial blessing to this ministry. Amen. When, when I used to, before I, before I was Lady Cannon, and, and I used to travel with Bishop Cannon, he used to always, as an evangelist, he would say, there's an expense that goes along with ministry. And um, we don't think about it, that the reality is the lights got to get paid, the air got to get cool. When you walk in here, you want to flick a, a switch and it get freezing cold where everybody got to pull out sweaters at cost. Amen. When we decide we want to upgrade into technology, those things cost. And this is the time that what you sow into this ministry um, benefits the furtherance of the ministry. We do so much, do so many things when it comes to in-house, but we do outside things too. And we don't always put a demand on the people outside of the door. So what you sow, what you sow into power is bigger than you. You never know the life that you change. We could give a child a book bag or a bike. And while it might not be nothing to the five-year-old, they're going to come and they're going to grow up and they're going to remember a church gave them a bike or a church gave them a meal. And then they might not find their way to Power and Praise Ministries, but at the end of the day, prayerfully, they find their way to Christ. And that's what matters at the end of the day. Amen, somebody. Amen. So we're with our offering in our hand. <clears throat> if you will, please rest on your feet all over the building as we say our decree. This is my good seed, and I'm sowing in the fertile ground. And by faith I decree, I will never be broke another day in my life. Somebody give the Lord praise as you pass your offering to, the, to the, your right or your left. Amen. We'll take a pause real quick. We um, have some guests with us on today. Who are families? Uh, who fa who are family of our leader? Well, they my family too, because you know, was he as mine as mine as his? Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna ask um, if Tanya will come as if Sister Tanya is coming at this time um, with greetings and a, uh, what do I call it? A gift for Bishop Cannon. Let us say amen for her as she come. This is the Sunday that we did it after his birthday. We bless you, we honor you, and we wanted to show you that we love you. You can always tell somebody, but when you show action behind it, then it, that makes a big difference. But on today, I wanted to tell you, I wanted to bring Psalms 23 to your remembrance. And as we read down in Psalms 23, it tells us that God prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. And sometimes we, it don't, might not look like there are enemies in our presence, but he knows, and he's preparing a table. And this morning, I want to encourage you and tell you that God is preparing a table for you in the presence of your enemy. All you have to do is stay the course. Sometimes you don't even have to say anything. <laughs> but you just need to stay the course and do what he tells you to do and leave the consequences to him. And so this morning, we want to present something to you on today. see it, but it must be cowboys based on Deacon Rockets or something. <laughs> Lift your right hand and receive our pastor on this morning. Say, God bless. 
Bishop Cannon. Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, I said, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Guess what? You, you get to celebrate me another year, not remember me. I said, you get to celebrate me another year, not remember me. God has kept me. Hallelujah. He has kept you. We owe him praise. I said, we owe him praise. It might not be how we think it is or should be, but we're here by the grace of God. And we owe God. We owe God. It's not working like we want it to. But we owe God. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know about you, but I thank him. I said, I thank him. I thank him. Yes, God. You may be seated. But as I get older, I, I, I understand and I appreciate more when David said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. The older you get, you realize I don't need stuff to happen for me to bless God. Just wake up and I bless him. Hallelujah. I walked to the refrigerator the other day to get some water. And I got to tapping my foot right in the kitchen. I tapped them because nobody had to help me get to the refrigerator. I was watching TV and I got thirsty. And my mind said, get up and go get something to drink. I didn't have to call my wife and say, honey, help me out of this chair and roll me. But my mind said it and I did it. The strength of God. So I thank him this morning for who he is and what he is to me. Amen. We honor God for all of you, God's children that are here. It is indeed a privilege and an honor to be in the house of God one more time. Amen. We thank God for the short. Amen. Opening us up with prayer, Lady Cannon. Praise and worship to these anointed minstrels. Amen. Who play for us every Sunday diligently to these elders, to the singers, to Lottie Dottie, and to everybody, to those that are joining us all at home. We honor God for you. Amen. Yes. Happy birthday. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody else had a birthday? It's a lot of June, birth, June, July birthdays. And happy birthday to everybody. I don't want to miss you, nobody. Amen. Thank you to my cousin. Amen. Cousins in the back. We two sisters' children. Right? We real cousins, y'all. Amen. We real cousins. Amen. It's so good to see Wanda. I thank God for Tanya. Amen. But Wanda, her mom is sitting behind her. It's so good to see her. Uh, help me. I tell their age, but how old are you? It's not my business, right? Yeah. 65. Amen. That, that is the oldest, you're the oldest woman in our family now. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So we honor God for you all today. Amen. We thank God and we bless God. Amen. Amen. When I was living in a world of sin, amen, my cousin used to let me sleep on her couch. Amen. When I was sinning and trifling. Amen. If I could just make it to her apartment. Amen. And it's good to see her in church now, praising God and lifting up the name of Jesus. Amen. Y'all got folk that y'all pray for too. 
keep on praying for them. Believe me, God's going to do it. Matter of fact, just say that right now in the atmosphere. Say, God's going to do it. Hallelujah. God's going to do it. I need my son to be on here. God's going to do it. God's going to do it. God's going to do it. God's going to get to the word of God today. And I heard you say that that was um, that's fiery that I did. I just wanted to acknowledge that I did hear that. Amen. Praise God in Jesus' name. Amen. The Cowboys is going to win the Super Bowl this year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. No attention. Just left the room. I want to thank all of y'all for y'all's love and support of me, your gifts, your kindness on my 48th birthday. We thank God. Yes. yes. All the seed that was sown. All the seed that was sown. The greetings, the texts, the calls, the prayers that were offered. I'm looking forward for 47 next year. Man, that the Lord see the same and delay his coming on. Amen. Yes. I know that's right. Come on. Y'all ain't got to receive 47. Get to the word of God on today. Acts, the second chapter. We don't have to stand on this one. Because it's the same scripture we've been reading for the last few weeks. Acts, the second chapter. Honing in this morning on the 14th verse. But Peter, standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing that it is the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. And in the last days shall come to pass, in the last days shall, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all sons and your daughters shall prophesy and young men shall see vision and your old men shall dream dreams staying with the theme this ain't that father in Jesus name we pray amen this ain't that it is important for us to understand that the Holy Ghost is something that we all have a right to. And I've said this for the last few fleeting weeks that the Holy Ghost is more than just something that stimulates emotion, but the Holy Ghost is a comforter, a keeper, a ruler, and a guide. Tanya, I believe that the old church that we grew up in did us a disservice, and it is my responsibility to kind of right the wrong that has been done. We've been led to believe that all the Holy Ghost does is make us move our feet from the temple. Speaking an unknown tongue as the Spirit of God gives utterance or move demonstratively in the temple like something is giving us palpitations or a seizure. But when you come to the knowledge of the truth, it is your responsibility as a blood-washed believer to have to walk therein. Amen, somebody. We had a conversation, I believe, on Tuesday with some friends of ours, and I, I appreciate her transparency and her honesty uh, as over the last few months she had been, uh, no, no, nobody that you know, she had been seeking uh, the more of God. She had been uh, studying the word of God and, and trying to, you, you know, be a better person or be, be, be what God has called her to be. And she said the other night, she said, man, I, I had to stop reading that Bible. And I started laughing because I already knew uh, where she was going. Uh, and, you know, my wife and I asked the question, well, what are you talking about? She said, I came to the realization that the more I read, the more I'm to be held accountable for. And I'm not at the place in this stage of my life <laughs> where I want to be held accountable for everything in the word. And I began to chuckle because that's something that I reminded her three, two or three months ago when, 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 when she set out on this journey of trying to find out the deep things of God. I said, one thing you've got to realize is the more you get it in you, the more it's going to live in you. 
To whom much is given, much is required. And we have been led to believe, well, most of us, because I know some of y'all have a greater grace on your life than even I, but we have been led to believe that all the Holy Ghost does is what we've ever seen him do. And we are living beneath our privilege. I was, I, I, am, I am team iPhone, um, but I do have a droid. I don't really use the droid because it's a droid. Uh, and I'm more comfortable with the iPhone. But both phones I only use for maybe 25 or 35 percent of what its capacity really is. I just learned something yesterday that I could do on the droid that I didn't know the droid could do. I've had this phone for several years and past social media, past texting, past talking, I didn't know uh, that I could copy and paste documents. What the? <laughs> I know I could do it on the iPhone because it's the iPhone. Yeah. Put it up in the cloud. Yeah. But my wife showed me on the on the on the uh, droid how to copy paste, you know, and send a document to someone else. And that's how some of us are. We have a droid, the Holy Ghost. And it's been with us for a mighty long time. But there are things that we have yet learned to activate with it being in our possession. It is not that we don't have it. We have just not tapped into all of it. Oh, I feel like preaching this morning. So it is, it is, important, it is important that as we uh, shift from Pentecost into going out, doing what God has assigned for us to do, that we have a clear and concise understanding of all that the Holy Ghost can and will do for your life. And it is important you must understand that we'll never get a grasp as to all that he can do. Preach Bishop Cannon. Don't care how long you've been in the way, you'll never, you'll never get a full understanding of the dunamis power of God. Can't figure him out get to trying to figure out the Holy Ghost through God or God through the Holy Ghost, you'll find yourself in a mess. Because just as soon as you figure out he coming in the front door, he'll come in through the side door. But how can he come in through the side door when there's no outside entrance? Because when you understand God, he is the door. The Bible says he is the way, the truth, and the life. That's why we have to stop looking for God in the most common of areas. How am I going to pay my bills and I have no money? By faith, I just believe. I wish I had a witness. I am a witness of what God can do. So we've been on this journey of trying to understand uh, to the best of our ability uh, all that God can do for us through the Holy Ghost. So we've come to realize that on Pentecost, there was this great outpouring of the Holy Ghost uh, upon the lives of all believers that were present. And uh, a couple weeks ago, we talked about the change. Last week, we talked about uh, the challenge and, and, and the charge. Uh, but we want people to understand that when you accept what God allows, in the words of uh, Bishop uh, uh, Richard White, you are better off anyway. Somebody say, I'm better off. When I, when I accept what God allows. What God allows. So we've told you as a believer, you've got to first acknowledge God has a purpose for your life. Do you believe that there's an assignment for your life? Or do you just think your mother and daddy got together and created you and you just got to go through life? Um, just go through life. You've got to accept the fact that there is an assignment for me. Might not have a microphone in your hand, might not have a Bible, might not have an introduction, three points, and a holler, but there is something that God created you to do. And then once you acknowledge your purpose, then you have to accept your purpose. You have to accept the fact that in order for you to get to where God is taking you, you must be prepared. The songwriter years ago said, please be patient with me, God is not through with me yet. 
that simply suggests that I am still yet a work in progress. It amazes me how folk can sit in a sagittal and pharisaical seat and critique the bishop, can critique the pastor, can critique the elders and what they need to do, can critique the musicians and what they need to do. They off key, they not on the right key, they played the wrong song, but just as soon as critique finds you, you now look for grace. No, honey, if it's good enough for the goose, it ought to be good enough for the gander. So we've got to understand that even in going through life, God is preparing us for something greater. And he has to prepare us for it, Brother Clyde, because if he gives it to us now, we will mishandle it. What would most of y'all do? If somebody came in here today and just gave you a bag of money and you counted it and it was like $10 million, $15 million. Most of y'all can't even. The first thing y'all, some of y'all would do is say pay your bills. No, you done missed it already. I can tell you right now, if I had $10 million, the first thing is not paying my bills. But our mindset has to shift in order for us to be able to walk in what God has. You've got to realize who you are today is not who you were 10 years ago. Preachers can. And if I could walk a little further, who you are today is not even who you were last year. Who you are today, come on somebody, is not even who you were last night. Mm. You have to realize that God is developing you into something. You, you, you know, uh, I believe his name is uh, uh, Wimbenyana. Uh, that's the young man that's seven foot, he ain't figured out the rest yet from over in France that was drafted by the San Antonio Spurs. He's one of the best players overseas at that time. He, he, he ain't got to jump the dunk. He just lift his hand up. And just, so y'all know who I'm talking about. So he was the number one player in the draft on the NBA this year. But just because he's good over there does not mean he's going to equate to being good here. So the couple days after the draft, while everybody else was partying, he flew to San Antonio so that he could begin training. And it was funny how they began to show videos of his first practice on a San Antonio court. He was 0 for 7 in shooting. And everybody kind of blew up the fact that he was missing buckets. It ain't about where you're from. It's about where you at. And you've got to realize sometimes a change of an environment will change a perspective. You've got to understand that if any man be in Christ, he is a new, old things are past. That's why I can testify about who I used to be, what I used to do, and all that, because I am not that anymore. God allowed that to help push me into this. And that's why some of us must embrace the fact that, yes, I used to be something, but by the grace of God, I am not who I used to be. I'm not going to lie and say I didn't do it. I did do it. And by doing that, I can testify that even in my sin, God kept me. Oh, I wish I had somebody here that knows that even in my dysfunction, God kept me. And the reason why he kept me, because there was something greater in store for me. Somebody say, for me. Come on, say it again, for me. <laughs> say, God's got something greater. <laughs> yes, you've got to make up in your mind that God is preparing you for something. I believe Wilmington Chester Mass Choir had the song, God is preparing me for something that I cannot handle now. He's making me ready just because he cares for me. You ought to thank God that he cares for you, you should have been dead a long time ago, sleeping in your grave, but God cares for you. He sustained you. Who wouldn't serve a God like that, that looks beyond, I'm about to draw my own cooking today, looks beyond your faults and sees your needs. You, some of y'all can't get excited about looking beyond your faults because you act like you ain't got none. You act like you dotting every I and crossing every T. No, honey, all of us are come short of the glory of God. All, all of us sin and fall short. 
whether it's by thought, word, or deed, you all got a little something, something that you struggle. Y'all ain't going to help me preach here this morning again. All of us got a little something, something. <laughs> Toss and turn, girl. I mean, I saw, la, la, are we all got something that keeps us on our knees praying to God above God help me as I try to get through this particular predicament that I have found myself in he's preparing us somebody say he's preparing to get in here to this week's point so you must understand not only is God preparing you but you must allow God's power to work through you. Come on, preach, Bishop Cannon. I said you must acknowledge, but you must allow God's power to work through your life. That's why you find some days you're back up against the wall because God wants you to understand that it is of no, none of your power, but it is of his that has you where you are right now. Allow God's power to work through your life. In this particular passage of scripture this morning, Peter is confirming that the presence of God was no longer confined uh, to just those that were priests or in a single nation class of society. Because, you know, at that time it was led to believe that you had to be the priest or you had to be someone of, 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 of high genealogy or stature, if you will, in order to be able to receive that which was of God. You had to be somebody, somebody. But you want to thank God that after Pentecost, well, when Pentecost came, God loved the entire world that he poured his spirit out upon Lottie, Dottie, and everybody. Uh, God, you want to thank God that you are now a recipient of the dunamis power of God. It was God's power that was now being poured out and made available to everyone. Somebody say everyone. Everyone at this time now can be a recipient to the oil or the favor or the power of God. Regardless of our differences like age or gender, background or economic status or education. No matter if you came from up town or downtown, you are now able to be a recipient of God's favor. No matter if you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth or you were born broke, busted, and disgusted because God loved us enough, he allowed us to be in line for his power. Yes, you have a right right where you are today to be a recipient of the dunamis power of the Holy Ghost. But you have to allow God's power to work in you. Yes, you got to not only activate it, but you've got to allow it to work. The Bible says, and we know that all things work together for them that love the Lord. I think I'm going to preach part of this next week because my package didn't come in the mail. But I ordered a puzzle, Mother Walker, for everybody that came to church because I want the saints to understand that every piece of the puzzle, while it's in the box, is nothing. But when we put the pieces together, it shows us what's on the box. And when we understand all the hell that I've been through, it equates to some of the good times and the bad, but they're nothing more than pieces to a puzzle in order for God to get the glory out of my life. That's why I don't wait till the battle is over. I shout right now. Cause the songwriter declared in the end I already got victory so if I got it at the finish line I already got it now you might get there before me but I still got victory you might get there after me but you still got victory cause all things work together for the good of them that are called according to his purpose we've got to understand my brothers and my sisters the power of God works through your life in three distinct ways y'all be seated I'm going to holler in a minute three distinct ways that the power of God worketh through your life the first way is through authority somebody say authority authority 
God. The power or right to give orders, make decisions, and enforce obedience is authority. What do you mean, sir? God through authority is working through me. The power or right to give an order, I don't understand. The power to make decisions, I'm confused. The power to enforce obedience, please help me out. I'm so glad you need help. Because the Bible declares you have the authority to speak to a mountain and tell that mountain to get out the way. Life and death resides in the power of your tongue. We got to stop waiting for once a year revivals to come. For a prophet to come from out of town. To prophesy to us what God has already said. Oh, I come to help set somebody free today. Prophecy only comes to confirm what God has already said you got to know down on the inside that when the man of God or the woman of God tell you to come out you got to praise not because they said it but because God is reminding you that he already said it I got authority I can speak to a mountain I can speak to my finances I can speak to my children I can speak on my job I can speak over my family because I have authority through the power of the Holy Ghost that's down on the inside try it on this week speak to something that's been a thorn in your flesh try it on tonight when you go home that thing that's been getting on your nerve. I almost cussed. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That thing that's been getting on your nerve. Try it when you go home. Speak to it. Try it on social media. Because you know folk will get on social media trying to figure out everything about you. Oh, but baby, in this season, you're going to sift some things in your life. Not because Canon said it, but because you said it. Yeah. I said on last week, I got to lose this weight. Got on the scale this morning, I done dropped four pounds. Look at the God that I serve. Yes, I know I stopped eating a lot of heavy stuff, but because I said it, God's will and God's way lines up with what I say and it comes together to produce favor on my life and when favor's on my life God gets the glory yeah Uh, Am I helping anybody here? So not only my brothers and sisters, do you have power in the context of authority, but you also have it in the context of ability. Ability suggests possessing the means, the skill, and the talent, or the proficiency to do something. The ability. God doesn't give you the Holy Ghost just for you to dance but he gives you the Holy Ghost for you to work it was Jesus that said I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day yes the ability what do you mean well scripture says that I can tread upon serpents and take up no deadly thing and it shall harm me I have the ability to let folk lie on me and not cuss their behinds out I have the ability for folk to turn their back on me and not fall into a state of depression I have the ability to pray God when I want to quit. Why? Because there's no longer I that lives in me. But it's the strength of a true and living God. Preach Bishop Kenny. So I have the authority and I have the ability but I also got to realize that you have access. Somebody say access. Access is nothing more than permission of or means to a way of approaching, entering or communicating with or making use of. Or in other words, the access is the right to engage. 
Uh, come on, Bishop. <laughs> you was good <laughs> when you told me I could speak to the mountain. <laughs> you was good <laughs> when you said I could tread upon serpents. <laughs> but I don't know about this access thing. <laughs> what scripture are you going to pull now? <laughs> well, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> I love it when you back me up against the wall. <laughs> I love it when you try to challenge my authority. <laughs> what do you mean by access? <laughs> well, the scripture says, for we know not what we should pray for, but the spirit maketh intercessions with groanings. You got to know sometimes you got to stop being articulate when you talk to God. Well, most wise and gracious God, our father, the giver of every good and perfect thing, the God that stepped out on the panel of nothing and said let the yeah that sounds cute but every now and then you just gotta open your mouth and say Jesus because he already know what you have need of even before you ask how does he know because he got access how does he know because the door has been opened how does he know because the way has already been made so you've got to understand my brothers and my sisters that the power of God warm it up in this ride the power of God is going to work in your life through these ways and when you allow the power of God to work in your life it will begin to develop things in you that you did not know I wish I had somebody here that can testify that I came to Jesus just as I was weary wounded and sad and I found in him a resting place and he made me glad I ain't got no help here but is there anybody that knows that the God that you serve is a quicker picker upper is there anybody in here that knows that the God you serve is a healer a way maker a bridge over troubled water then I I said, oh, oh God, the clapping of my head. Yeah, I oh God, the tapping of my feet. Because when something begins to work on the inside, that brings about a change on the outside. What a joy it will be. Yeah. Yeah, God can give you the power to overcome fear. Yes, he can. I said God can give you the power to overcome your flesh. God will give you the power to overcome your finance. God will give you the power to overcome your family. And God, won't he do it? Give you power to overcome your feelings. You know how it is. Every now and then, we get attitude enough. Every now and then, we fought fine. Every now and then, the weight gets heavy and the road gets rough. But when you tap in to the power of God, you realize greater is he that's in me than he that's within the world. Why, Bishop, does the Lord give me power? Because he needs a witness. Yes, your witness will never be as effective in the world if you never overcome the Bible. 
it declares we are overcomers by the blood of the land and the word of our testimony. Help me preach. Say no test, no testimony. No test, no testimony. The reason you go through is because God is giving you a testimony to tell somebody not by power nor by might but by God by God's spirit that's on the inside of my life you waiting for me to quit you waiting for me to stumble you waiting for me to fail but I refuse to quit I refuse to fail I refuse to stumble cause I'm too close to turn around now he's been good he's been kind he brought brought me from a mighty long way say yeah 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 we make the choice to allow his power to work in our life but we should not choose which part we want to work you got to tell God have all of me and my feet my mind and my heart lay me on the altar of sacrifice yeah break me and mold me into what you would have me to be I'm out of here I'm almost done but God in my conclusion did not pour out his spirit so we could dance sing preach or speak in tongues those are nothing more than byproducts of being connected to God but rather he pours out his spirit so that we could be a witness unto him yeah yeah I got the quick but open your mouth and say Lord pour it out on me Lord pour it out on me my hands my feet my mind and my heart yeah pour it out hey hey pour it out so I can love again pour it out so I can forgive my enemy pour it out to renew my walk pour it out he didn't give you his gift to exploit it give you his gift just to use it but he gave it to you for you to have access to him you got the Holy Ghost to be a help to somebody who don't you got the Holy Ghost to be a light to somebody in darkness. What does the world say about your relationship? 
with God. The Holy Ghost keeps you where you don't want to be kept. Come on now, somebody. We ain't forgot how to cuss. We ain't forgot how to fight. The Holy Ghost just restricts us. Because if we take matters into our own hands, God can't get the glory. Hallelujah. Whether we prophesy, dream dreams, or see visions, we all, somebody say all, we all have a right to receive his power. The power of God helps you to walk in his way. Ask Joseph. There's Job. There's Joshua. The Holy Ghost has us the power to work his will. Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The nighttime comes. No man shall work. Hallelujah. Not only does the power help us to walk his way, his way walk his will, but it also helps us to be a witness of his works and his wonders. The blind man, the impotent man, the woman with the issue of blood, the man with the withered hand, we have all kind of examples of what happened to someone when they first believed, came in contact with God, and walked in the power of God but allowed the power to work. What if the woman that had the issue of blood listened to what everybody else had to say? She'd have never got to Jesus. And even if she got to Jesus, still kept in her mind what people had said. She would have not allowed the power to work. See, it's not that some of us don't know that God can do it. We just don't allow it to work in us. It's not that we don't believe it, but we don't allow it to work in us. See, we, 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 we want to be an authority on stuff. And when you're an authority on stuff, and you, you'll, you'll know it all. You try. <laughs> That's good preaching, ain't it? say this, and I'm going to say it in love. The reason why some of us can't get over the mountain or over the hump is because we're playing a part that we were never designed to play. You trying to figure out the process before you even get on the mountain. How I'm going to go up and how I'm going to come down. And if you know how to go up and how to come down, there's no need now for faith. I know I'm right. Yeah. You got to have faith. For without faith, it is impossible. Do you, see, some of y'all get on my last nerve. So seriously, I ain't calling out no names. I'm just, I'm just talking. I'm just talking. I'm just talking. I ain't, don't nobody get mad. But if this is you, just say it's you. Somebody say, what you going to say, Bishop? Well, I wasn't going to say it, but since you asked. <laughs> Some of y'all got more faith for everybody else than you do for your own self. Seriously. Y'all will pray for everybody and their mama. God going to do it. Girl, I'm going to get to church, son, and I'm going to pray, and I'm going to praise on your behalf. And God does it. He does it. Not bad. You praying for strangers. God going to do it. What you dancing for? Because my neighbor got gout, and I believe God. Don't go away. I knew God could do it. 
month go down, month go by, you come to church all to pray. Hey, daughter, what's wrong? They talking about laying off at my job. And I don't know what I'm going to do. Now, now, you could praise God for the gout. But you can't praise God for a conversation. You didn't say that they laying you off. You got a piece of information, watch this, that you shouldn't even been privy to in the first place. See, that's part of the problem in the church. And I got to say it, we can't fault the lay members. It's the leader's problem. Too much, too much in-house stuff getting out the house. Too much in the office conversations getting out the office. Listen to what I said. You depressed because they talking about layoffs. They talking about they have meetings to see where we can cut things. And you depressed. Don't you know the same way you praise God for the gout? They can talk about layoffs all they want. But I'm going to ask God to hide me. They can, pray, they can talk about layoffs all they want. And if I'm in the number, I'm going to ask God to provide for me. You got the power. For you. You want to use your power for everybody else. No, use the power for yourself. It grieves my heart as a pastor. To watch some of y'all, and I'm talking in-house right now. To watch some of y'all have faith for a mustard seed, move mountain faith for everybody else. But when it come to you, you just say it. You say it. You got a word for everybody else. But you ain't got no word for yourself. Now how in the world can the Holy Ghost, you got to be the first partaker. How can the Holy Ghost give you something for me? But when the Holy Ghost give it to you, you can't hear. You got to be the first partaker. I don't care what it look like. Y'all don't like this. Will, I, I, listen. Will you allow the power of God to work through your life? Peter said, this ain't, this, this, what, what, what you see now is not what you think. This is nothing more than a manifestation of what was prophesied several years ago. What was the prophecy? That God is going to give everyone access to his power. What do you mean? I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That means everybody have a right. Everybody got access. Let the word do the work. We don't get the Holy Ghost just to dance. Dancing with the Holy Ghost is just like, for me, hot sauce on fried fish. For you, mustard. Some of y'all won't eat fried fish if it ain't fresh out of the grease. Come on, am I talking right? Some of y'all, who eat fried fish with a mustard on it? Amen. Who eat it with hot sauce? Ketchup. Amen. Amen. The mustard, the ketchup is nothing more than a condiment or an add to. The key is the fish. Carlos, how was on pig feet? My man. That's all. You ought to be able to think. And a lot of times we say, I need three seconds to think. You don't need three seconds. When you got the Holy Ghost, all you need is a glimpse. Somebody said a glimpse of what? I'm so glad you asked. Where he brought you from. You need another glimpse. Somebody said of what? What are you doing right now? And if those two don't work, you need another glimpse. Huh? Oh, where he taking you? I don't need to ponder on it. I just need a glimpse. 
wife and I was at the home office the other day, and she was sharing some things with me, some stuff that we got on the table. And I said, honey, I believe God. You know, on the inside, I was like, come on, God. <laughs> and he said, either you're going to believe me or you're going to ask me to come on. I said, well, let me go back to watching TV. <laughs> like, like we, when we embrace this Holy Ghost thing in its totality, it's nothing more than a mechanism to allow you to walk through this thing called life. Jesus said, and I'm done. He said, I'm going to leave you comfort. See, I don't mean like, like, like these comforters you buy out the mall now. <laughs> I'm done. I quit. I'm a good time. I don't mean like these comforters you buy out from Amazon or Walmart. You know, they're real thin. I'm talking about like them quilts my grandmama done made. Anybody had one of them old quilts? I ain't talking about this new stuff. You can buy, you can buy quilts now and they look like the old stuff. I'm talking about when you were sick as a child. Yeah. Your grandma gave you chicken noodle soup and ginger ale and some saltine crackers. Put you in the bed. And whoo. And the weight of that thing hit you. What no moving. They had you. It engulfed you. Couldn't move. You can try to move if you want. Make you sweat. That's what the Holy Ghost is. He wants to engulf you. And the reason why some of y'all sweat now in life is because you're trying to move from what the Holy Ghost trying to do. And it's making you work against the assignment for God. Come on, somebody. Now, now, we, listen. We gonna we can raise we can raise do some stuff in Bible study. We are gonna teach you about the. Uh, give me one of them Greek words for Holy Ghost. Give me one. Numa. There you go. Give me another one. You gonna learn about the Astelawego of God. You're going you to learn about the consigliere of God, the, the wind of God. And it's necessary. Hear me. No, hear, we're laughing. Hear me. It's necessary. It is necessary because we're living beneath our privilege because we don't understand him in his totality. The reason why some of y'all fail in relationships is because you get with what you see and not what the spirit reveals. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. I don't even care. So I'm talking about, I'm talking about myself. I failed in relationships. My cousin will tell you, cousin one thing, I was a hoe. Why not a mayor a hoe to? She said, leave me out of this. I got caught up in what I saw and not what I felt. I let what I see. You see? Oh my. Shh, don't tell nobody. I'm just joking. You got to, you got to tell it. That's your testimony. You ain't caught up now. Hey! He set you free. Messiah. So now you know what that caught up looked like. Not to get caught up again. And to tell somebody else. I'm already there waiting on you to catch up. You got to be, see, I, I was done. You got to be able to tell somebody what caught up looked like. That's your my heart. Well, that's true. Right about yeah, you right. About, I can't argue that part. You had me right there. You get in stuff, and you don't understand. Some of the cutest people I know, crazy as hell. You want some more? You want some more? Ugh, mug. 
get you a ugly mug. They nice. They can cook. You get one of them cute ones. They got fake stuff. Look at Shawnee. Shawnee, your hair look nice too. Got the I saw y'all on social media. Look like you need to be on the cover of Ebony Fashion Show. See, look at Shawnee's hair. It's nice. It's cute. Fashionable. You get with some of them cute people. You know, they got to take a bunch of clips and stuff out. Yeah. Who was it that time? I ain't calling no name. Who was it that time? Help me, Sister Mary. Who was my wife? Help me. Who was it that time we went traveling and they couldn't get through TSA because they had a whole bunch of pennies and stuff? We ain't call no names. We ain't call no names, I said. We ain't call no names. We, took, we went traveling somewhere. I don't even know where we went. We was going to Florida. Now, I done got through the TSA. I'm going about my business. And I'm hearing beep, 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 beep. Let me take this one out. Beep. Take this one out. Beep. How many, how many of us have played the fool sometime? I don't have time because I need to be done. Maybe I'll talk about it next week. I played the fool. And, and playing the fool, not allowing the access that I had of the Holy Ghost will get you in years of trouble will get you in years of hurt. But when we learn to trust God the more. I was praying yesterday morning. My wife and I got this thing now where we don't get up out of the bed without praying, like touching and agreeing. I know we both pray, but like we touch and agree. And uh, we be trying to pray. And it'd be funny, y'all, sometimes. I wish y'all could be a fly in the living room. Because some morning we be praying and we both be sleeping. We're like, God, it's real. Father, come on in. And she'll nudge me, like, come on on my Sunday, on my Sunday. And then we're, because I mean, we don't go to bed. Like, y'all, like, if y'all seen our lives, we don't go to bed sometimes until like 3 o'clock in the morning. Seriously. I went to bed one night, like 2 o'clock. She was still in the office. I woke up 6 o'clock in the morning. She So we don't have a schedule. But every morning we pray. And, and some mornings we be, I don't remember my Sunday. Some mornings I wake up and, hello, God. So glad to see you. And then we get to pray. Like every morning we do not get up out of the bed without really praying. Talking to God. Before I go to the news. Before we pick up the phones or anything. anything. Now some mornings I be having to pee. You know, you got that morning pee? And she'd be praying. I'd be like, come on. I got to go. But Friday morning, we prayed. And as soon as I picked up my phone, it, somebody had posted um, a, a meme or something on social media. And it was like, you spend more time helping people that you're not supposed to help. That's why you don't have help for yourself or something, something like that. And it was like that was God's answer to part of the prayer that I prayed that morning. And I was like, God, you, you, you special. The reason why I've been preaching like this since Pentecost is because the church has led us to believe that we can only see the favor or the miracles of God in the temple. And we miss God in life. God can speak through anything. You ever been riding down the highway talking about a situation and you just happen to see a billboard and whatever's on that billboard speaks to your condition? That you can't tell what no other billboard said on that highway, but you just happen to look up at that one time and that one billboard, it's going to be all right. <laughs> you know, throat lodge. It's, it's going to be all right, throat lodge. And just. <laughs> but it spoke to your condition. 
Who was it that told you to look up at that moment? God did. Come on, y'all. Let's as we move forward. I'm done. We're gonna pray and get out here. As we move forward in life, let's through the power of the Holy Ghost stop living beneath our privilege. Yes, sir. How you feeling today? Feel better. Okay. Let the Holy Ghost do the work. Twenty-something years, all my life in church. Church wasn't always in me. And I'm just now at 48. Understanding that the Holy Ghost is more than what I thought. I'm just now learning. I thought if you don't, you know, my son. It's more than that. And people who don't, you know, no, 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 my son. Still got a right to the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongue is evidence of having the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. God, we thank you for this day. Teach us how to access you, God. Teach us how to develop right relationship with you. Teach us how to be what you called us to be. Yes, God. We are your people. We are the sheep of your pasture. Order our steps. In the name of Jesus. Everyone that can hear my voice, God, look upon them in a special way. Pray, God, now that you would dispatch ministering angels to come and see about them. Hear their hearts cry, God. Hear their prayer. Those things that they have talked to you about that nobody else knows. Pray, God, that you'll meet every need in their life in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we're living in a sick world, but you keep on keeping us. And for that, we say thank you. Hallelujah. Cover us with your blood, God. Protect us. Hallelujah. Be to us what we need you to be so that we can be to you what you need us to be. Give us a testimony, not by power nor by might, but by your spirit. Look upon those that are looking at us on the social media. Meet every need, oh God, in their life. Do it, God, not for self-aggrandizement. Do it not, God, so that we can be braggadocious. But do it, God, so that you get the glory. All the glory belongs to you. All the honor belongs to you. In the name of Jesus, help us be that generation, God, that you're proud of, that our light shines in a dark world, that others will be drawn to who you are, God, like a moth to a flame. In the name of Jesus, let unspoken prayer request today, God, hear it, meet every need, oh God. Look upon those that are not here, God, touch those that are sick. We know you to be a healer, heart fixer, mind regulator, bridge over troubled water, battle axe, provider, God. Do it, God, for your glory. And if you do these things, God, we'd be so ever careful and mindful to give your name the praise. Until we meet again, the glory and the honor belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say thank God. Come on, say thank God. God bless you all. You're dismissed.